Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thanks and enjoy. In the previous video, we talked about how we could elongate palmitate to stearate and to other long chain fatty acids. In this video, I want to talk about how we can make unsaturated fatty acids via desaturation. So that's exactly what desaturation is. It's making UFAs or unsaturated fatty acids. So how can this happen? What we can do is we can take palmitate and we could um, we can get a double bond put into it. Right? So let's say we draw this here. This is palmitoleate. Okay. Palmitoleate. And palmitoleate is just palmitate with one degree of unsaturation and specifically that double bond is uh, noted here delta 9 which means that the double bond begins at 9 and goes to 10 as you can see here and it is of course drawn as a cis double bond. Okay. This, is, this process is called desaturation right? and this is accomplished by an enzyme called fatty acyl-CoA desaturase. Okay. And there's a little asterisk there and I'll get to what that means in just a moment. Okay. Um, just just like we do this with palm, palmitate to get palmitoleate, we can also do it to stearate to get this molecule, which is oleate. Same idea. We actually get that double bond put in between the 9 and the 10. So the, the, the sort of convention, the way it's drawn or written is the same. Um, and it's the same idea, right? Desaturation done by fatty acyl-CoA desaturase. Okay. So fatty acyl-CoA desaturase is the enzyme that does this. An important thing to note about fatty acyl-CoA desaturase, sometimes just referred to as desaturase, it is a mixed function oxidase. And mixed, func mixed function oxidases require three things, um, molecular oxygen, it also requires um, uh, NADH, and it also requires cytochrome B6. Okay, that's a B, B6. Okay, um, I'm not going to talk too much about mixed function oxidases and their mechanistic details and things like that. All I wanted to mention was that this desaturase enzyme is a mixed function oxidase. I might make a video on mixed function oxidases later, um, but you can see here that we're basically um, oxidizing palmitate to palmitoleate and oxidizing stearate to oleate. Okay, now oleate can be um, oleate, excuse me, oleate and palmitoleate are actually, they both only have one degree of unsaturation. So they are monounsaturated fatty acids or MUFAs, right? So this is a MUFA, this is a MUFA as well, right? What if we wanted to get PUFAs, which are polyunsaturated fatty acids? Well, we could take oleate and we could turn it into, we could turn it into this molecule. which is called lino, linoleate, excuse me, linoleate, okay. So the difference here is that linoleate has, of course, uh, one more double bond, has two of them, and um, it, it's written here as 18-2, right, to, to show that it has two degrees of unsaturation, and they're specifically starting at 9 and 12, so we got a double bond between 9 and 10, and between 12 and 13, and of course there's cis as well, okay. Um, and now we've got more than one double bond, so this is a PUFA, a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Okay, and um, you'll notice here that linoleate has these two pink asterisks next to it, and the reason why is because linoleate is what's called an essential fatty acid, an essential fatty acid. At least here we're talking about for humans. Okay. Um, an essential fatty acid cannot be synthesized by that organism. Okay, so it must be obtained from the diet of that organism. So human, for humans, linoleate is an essential fatty acid, which means we must consume it in our diets in order to get it. And we and we do need it for um, for our body, and I'll talk about why in just a moment. Okay, um, so places we can get this from. Or we can get it from dark green veggies like broccoli and spinach, olive oil, almonds, walnuts, and there are other sources. But the point is that uh, we get it basically from uh, from plants, right? From our from from our diet. 
Um, and so this desaturation step here, I've drawn these green asterisks, just to indicate that they are sort of um, this, this step, even though it's done by a fatty acyl-CoA desaturase, this is only done in plants and, and bacteria as well, okay, so to give us this, um, this polyunsaturated fatty acid, okay, um, which of course in our case is essential. Okay. All right, let's slide things over a little bit. Okay. Now, linoleate, once we have linoleate, we can get more PUFAs, okay? Uh, so it can have two different desaturations, basically in different locations, to give us these two possible products. I'll draw this or show this one here, which is alpha linolenate over here. And over here, we'll have gamma linolenate. And they differ essentially in where the the next double bond is placed in that desaturation. Okay, so over here to the right, this desaturation, we put. So we first of all we started with two double bonds, right, in lino, linoleate between nine and ten and twelve and thirteen. Over here in alpha linolenate, we still have the nine and twelve, right, but we added uh, the one at fifteen. So there's an, uh, this this is the double bond that we added here. Let me put that in a different color. So we've added, let's put it in, let's do, let's do red. So we put this double bond here, right? And this, um, this is different from what's going on over here in gamma linolenate, right? Where we have, we still have the, the double bonds between 9 and 10 and 12 and 13, but here we put a double bond between 6 and 7. So that's noted here in the the convention here. And again, all these are all cis double bonds. The difference between these two different desaturations is that this one over here to the right has these green asterisks, which means that it can only occur in plants and uh, plants and bacteria. Whereas over here, humans can do this one. Okay, so so I'm going to put here again a different color. Let's do I don't know, pink, light pink. So humans can do this. This desaturation, but they cannot do this one. Okay, humans cannot do this. Okay, so what does that mean about alpha linolenate? This is an essential fatty acid as well, hence these two pink asterisks here. So these two desaturations with these green asterisks are making essential fatty acids. These things cannot happen in humans. They cannot happen in humans. And why is that? They are, they, they are reactions that make essential fatty acids. And these are essential, again, for humans. Essential fatty acids. Okay. So a question that might come up is, why is it that plants and bacteria can make these essential fatty acids for humans, but humans can't make them themselves? Um, it, I mean, the real answer I'm not exactly sure of, but you can imagine that humans, I mean, we... we we can, you know, go. We can, we can find shelter to stay warm. We can, we can put on clothes. We can make fires. We can, um, we have heaters in our cars and in our homes, and so we can keep ourselves warm and and sort of um, maintain homeostasis. But plants and bacteria, they can't exactly do that. Plants, I mean, once they're planted in the ground, they're pretty much going to stay there, right? Uh, but they need to be able to maintain membrane fluidity. Right, and in order to maintain membrane fluidity, they can increase the amount of unsaturated fatty acids that they have. Right, so it makes sense that they would have to be able to make these unsaturated fatty acids to increase the concentration of those in their membranes to maintain membrane fluidity. Okay, whereas humans, they can just get that stuff by eating them. Okay. So now, why am I even bringing this up at all? Um, so let's let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, now we have gamma linolenate and alpha linolenate. Let's keep it up here like this. So alpha linolenate um, can basically go on and give us um, give rise to other polyunsaturated fatty acids, and it is of course a polyunsaturated fatty acid itself, right? So it's a PUFA, and so is gamma linolenate. Right? Okay. So. Um, I'm not going to concern myself with this right side anymore. Let's think about this left side, and you'll see why in just a moment. 
Um, so gamma linolenate can give us this next fatty acid called icosatrienoate. Okay, it's kind of a mouthful. Um, so this is a 20 carbon um, fatty acid, whereas gamma linolenate was 18 carbons. This we have the same number of degrees of unsaturation at three here, three here. Uh, but we have two more carbons in icoso and icosatrienoate. Okay, so that means here we didn't have a desaturation reaction; we instead had an elongation reaction, right? And we'll also notice that with this delta notation here, here we had three double bonds, um, and here we have three double bonds. But the numbers changed. Why did the numbers change? Okay, well if you think about it, where were the two carbons actually attached? Were they attached to to this end over here, to this end over here, or to this end over here. Well, if we look at the molecules, we should be able to tell that they were actually added to this end here. Right? These two carbons came from the elongation reaction, right? The rest of this molecule, if we look at it, looks identical. If we start from, from over here, uh, we have 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. That's if we think about the numbering, uh, let's number a little bit differently here. Think about numbering this as uh, omega 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? And then we have a double bond there, alternate, another double bond, alternate, double bond. Um, here's the same thing, and I cost a trienoate, right? We have an omega 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? And then the, this, this side of the molecule, this left side of the molecule, pretty much looks the same. In fact, if we just take, um, if we consider this part here and to the left, that's pretty much this part here and to the left, right? So these two carbons over here um, at this carboxyl end uh, came from the elongation reaction. And I mentioned this o omega stuff here. One thing I, I want to go back and mention really briefly is that linoleate and alpha-linolenate um, are omega fatty acids, just like just in the way that these two are. This one here is an omega six, right? If we think about the omega numbering, one, two, three, four, five, six, where the double bond starts at that sixth, sixth omega carbon, right? And over here, this is a one, two, three, so this is an omega three fatty acid. So omega fatty acids are often talked about um, when people talk about health and they're important for a bunch of things and whatnot. So um, just wanted to mention that as a as a fact to to consider or be aware of. Anyway, back to these reactions. So we got this icosatrienoate. So that's why the numbering changed in this step, right? Because if we add these two carbons over here at this end, the carbonyl carbon has to be number one, right? Over here, carbon this was carbon number one. But when we add two carbons on the end, we're basically pushing all these other carbons back two numbers. Right, so the six becomes carbon number eight, nine becomes eleven, twelve becomes fourteen. So uh, the double bonds themselves didn't actually move; we just added carbons um, in front over here. Okay, so that's why the numbering changed in that step. Okay, but the but double bonds themselves didn't move. Okay. Now icosatrienoate can give rise to this next fatty acid here which is arachidonate. Conventions are given here. Same number of carbons, one more degree of unsaturation, so there must have been a desaturation occurring here. And that gave us arachidonate. So um, we've got you know all these PUFAs, <laughs> right? We've got PUFA, PUFA here. Now, um, here we just added uh, a double bond right here, right? that delta 5, that's where this came from uh, in that step. And we have yet another proof of that we're, that we're discussing. Um, but where am I going with all this? Why is any of this important? Right? Why am I talking about it at all? Well, arachidonate can give rise, it's actually a precursor to molecules called the icosanoids. The icosanoids. And these icosanoids are 20 carbon signaling molecules that are actually pretty important. And I might make a video on those guys specifically, uh, but not here. Okay, so um, the reason why I mentioned this entire pathway here is to bring up the idea that icosanoids, important signaling molecules, come from fatty acid synthesis 
um, specifically the desaturation of, of fatty acids. Okay. Now, one thing to keep in mind is where are all these reactions actually occurring? Where are they happening? Again, it's the, the endoplasmic reticulum, specifically the smooth ER. Again, because this is all lipid synthesis, lipid synthesis occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, that's the organelle that it occurs in. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is actually pretty important, an important note to make, is that the enzymes that accomplish these reactions, um, they actually, they, they, don't, they don't act on free fatty acids in the way that I drew them here. I've drawn all of these fatty acids as just free fatty acids, just chilling, waiting to be acted on by these by these enzymes, these elongation enzymes, these desaturase enzymes. That's not actually the case. The fatty acids that are being desaturated, um, they they actually must be on a phospholipid. Okay. So I've drawn them as free fatty acids just for the sake of simplicity so that I wouldn't really get too complicated and too messy, although it probably did get a little bit messy and complicated. Um, hopefully it was easy enough to follow with the color coding and whatnot. Um, but what you can imagine is that, um, let's just say that we're considering this uh, desaturation and step up here from, from oleate to linoleate, right? So we have, um, we have oleate here and we desaturate it give, get, to give linoleate. That wouldn't actually, this desaturase enzyme wouldn't actually act on this free fatty acid to give this free fatty acid. What would, what would that actually look like? is it would just be on a phospholipid. So you can imagine it looking like this. So let's say we have to start off with the phospholipid over here. And this phospholipid, this is phosphatidylethanolamine with uh, oleate on, the, on carbon number two. What we can do is, of course, we can have a desaturation reaction to give, to go from oleate to a phospholipid with linoleate instead. So um, the whole idea is that the enzyme just has to act on a fatty acyl group that is on a phospholipid and not just free. So I hope that video was helpful and informative, and uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks, and happy studying.